In today's before and after video, I will transform this into this. And I will explain how and why I did it along the way. This is UI design done by someone you could consider an experienced designer. So it shouldn't have any issues and there is nothing wrong with it, right? Right? Let's start with the first screen. As you can see, we are dealing with some sort of a fintech app of wallet variety that is connected to regular banking. We can deduce that through the presence of Coinbase name and representation of the regular debit card connected to it. First thing that is very much apparent are the colors and shapes. You could say that it's a prime example of why it's a good practice to make some room between UI elements in your design. It looks weird and unnatural in a sense. Lack of distance and proper margins, I mean. Is it affecting usability? Uh, mm. Well, if you consider that weird or bad visuals create unpleasant feelings for the user, then absolutely yes. Apart from weird distancing, the worst offense is definitely an unbalanced color palette. We can count one, two, three, and more colors that we could consider primary ones. Right color palette is especially crucial on mobile designs. Colors should help guide users on what is important or to core functionality. In the previous example, it's hard to tell what should be the focus of attention. So in my redesign, I pick one of the colors and generated a new palette based on it. Then I applied that new palette with the 60-30-10 rule. If you are not familiar with it, I made a great video that explains it in detail. You will find the link in the description. But in short, primary color should take 10% of the design and then supporting colors should take 30 and 60 respectively. Now, let's go from the top. I don't know if this is a placeholder for a user photo or logo of the service, but that is unnecessary here. Whatever that is, we can move it to the navigation that will hide under this button. Then we have the dollar values. For those of you that are unfamiliar with it, the dollar sign and associated number need to be written without any space between the sign and the number. Also, please be realistic in your designs. 30 millions, great indicator that your design is fake right away. Okay, now we move to the most favored and overused design piece of the last five years, credit card. If you are going for a skeuomorphic representation of an item in the UI, make sure that you are somewhat accurate. Typically, the name of the card holder is at the bottom of the card. Also, what's the point of even representing it if there is no way to preview important parameters for the actual use? That's why in my redesign I introduced a function that could allow the user to preview the card number and CVC code. Also, I aligned everything properly. Now we have function buttons. On the before screen, the first two are indicated as primary ones through color. That is a bad practice. Typically, there should be only one primary action to perform. If there are more of them, we need to consider their importance. That's why on my redesign I removed the color, because in my mind, all of those actions are at the same level of importance. Then, the last elements I want to focus your attention on are, again, numbers, come on, $12,000 for a burger, size of the main navigation, and something that isn't obvious at the first glance, but inconsistencies of style of the icons. On the first screen we can see that we have two types of the icons, filled in and hollowed. That's not necessarily a bad thing if it serves a functional purpose like in the navigation, where filled in icons represent active options and the rest inactive ones. But here it generates inconsistencies in layout and makes visual noise. Last thing about the icons is that on the before screen they have different weight, so on my redesign I unified them. Let's move to the next screen. I will skip the points from the previous example and focus only on the new items. First, position of the action button. It's way too up. It will be hard for a user to reach it. Also, it's hard to spot it amid all of those colors. Apart of that, we have unnecessary duplication of messaging. And since it's a saving summary, why not to focus on the actual saving summary? Hmm? Then we have the laziest approach to dummy content, copy pasting. A great indicator that design is fake, but also numbers that don't make much sense. $1000 for a wedding and $6000 for a house? If you have a house for that price, please reach out to me. I will buy it without hesitation. Next screen is more of the same really, apart from this graph thing and inaccuracy of numbers. What does this graph represent? I guess even the author didn't have an idea. But it looks neat, right? So on my red design, I attempt to make it an actual usable part of the UI by introducing a time period of 10 days and amount of savings made during those days. Now it actually makes sense. I hope you liked part seven of the series. 
If you liked it, watch more of it here.